Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with sweet potato gnocchi. That's right, I'm gonna show you how to produce little pillows of pasta using a sweet potato, which is gonna be a lot of fun and pretty easy. And since we're using the orange flesh sweet potato, I was just about to say also nutritious, but then I remembered we're gonna be saucing this with a bacon butter. So I guess we'll put good for you in the maybe column, but definitely fun, easy, beautiful, and most importantly, delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by taking one large sweet potato and performing the old poke and roast, which just means taking a sharp knife and pricking the skin all over before we roast this until it's completely tender, which I like to do in the microwave since it's fast and easy. But you could also, of course, do this in the oven. Okay, it really doesn't matter as long as when you're done, it is very, very, very soft, which we will know for sure by poking with a knife. And then what we'll do once this is cool enough to handle, although still very warm, is go ahead and split that in half. And then using a spoon, we'll go ahead and scoop all that gorgeous orange flesh into a bowl. Oh, and I should mention, these orange ones are often sold as yams at the store, purely for marketing purposes. But they're not, they're actually just orange flesh sweet potatoes. And while any variety will work, these orange ones are clearly the most beautiful. And from what I hear, the most nutritious. And that's it, once all that flesh has been scooped and scraped from the skin, we'll go ahead and take a potato masher and smash this nice and smooth which you can definitely do in a food processor, but it's been my experience that cleaning a food processor is way harder than this. And while using a machine, we'll get this a little smoother. With just a couple minutes of mashing with a hand tool, this is gonna be plenty smooth. And then once that's set, we'll go ahead and add one optional ingredient, a nice spoon of ricotta cheese. And if you don't have it or don't wanna add it, this will still work. But I do think these are a little nicer with a little touch of that in there. We will also toss in one large beaten egg, as well as of course some salt and definitely a few shakes of our good old friend cayenne pepper. And then what we'll do is take a spoon and give this a very thorough mixing until all of those ingredients are thoughtfully combined. And as far as simple everyday meditations go, you really can't beat stirring something together. All right, scientists can't explain it, but it really does make you feel better. But anyway, once we have that well mixed and we're feeling nice and relaxed, we'll go ahead and add some all-purpose flour and we'll continue mixing with the spoon. All right, sort of slowly at first, if for no other reason than so we don't knock all the flour out of the bowl. And then once that flour does start to get incorporated, we can begin to stir a little more aggressively. And basically we're gonna keep stirring until the mixture comes together and we think we can switch to working it with our hands. And by the way, if you have to add a little more flour for that to happen, go ahead. And once we've reached that point, we'll go ahead and transfer that from the bowl to our work surface, which is the surface upon which we work. And our entire game plan here is to just work in enough flour with some very gentle kneading and massaging until we achieve a dough that we're able to roll out into like half inch thick ropes. And if the dough seems too wet and it's sticking to the table or to your hands, just add some more flour until it stops doing those things. And while it is true this stuff would be easier to work with if we added a ton of flour, that would also make our gnocchi very dry and heavy and tough. Whereas what we really want with these is something that's moist and relatively tender. So right about here, my dough is feeling pretty good. So I stopped and formed it into some kind of uniform shape, at which point I dusted it with flour and then grabbed my bench scraper so I could cut it into quarters to begin the rolling process. And since it had been a while since I made these, with this first piece I made two major mistakes. All right, first of all, I applied way too much flour, which means there was not enough friction for this dough to grip the table and my hands. So I didn't have enough of what we call in the business, gription. Okay, when you use that much flour, the dough just kind of slides through it, or as we say, snow plows, as I continue to just blatantly make up culinary terms. And then the other mistake is this piece was too big, as I think one eighth of this dough is probably a much easier size to roll out. So I cut it in half. But anyway, I kept at it, and eventually I did obtain enough gription to get this thing to roll out, which generally we want to do in a direction from the center out towards the ends. And sure, there were a few hiccups along the way, all right, some spots still had too much flour, while other spots were too sticky and needed more flour. But as you know, we never let the food win. So I just kept at it. And a couple minutes later, I managed to roll this out into about a half inch thick rope, or as my grandmother used to call it, snake. Oh, and for your information, each roll I did after this one got a little easier and came out a little better. So why didn't I film one of those? Well, as the kids used to say, to keep it real. And once we do have that rolled out into a fairly uniform rope or snake, We'll go ahead and dust the top with flour. And then using our bench scraper, which we should also flour, we'll go ahead and cut these about every half inch 
to make some beautiful little gnocchi. And if I thought my muscle memory was bad when it came to rolling the dough, that was nothing compared to me trying to cut these. I mean, it really does look like I've never done this before. But like I said, the second one did go a lot better, both with the rolling and the cutting, which is why I'm going to show you to redeem myself a little bit. Oh yeah, now we got the hang of it. And no, that was not sped up. I'm insulted by your question. And sure, if you want to roll your ropes a little thicker and cut these into a little bigger pieces, go ahead. Or as long as they're fairly consistent, the size is up to you. I mean, you are after all the Chuck D of your gnocchi. But personally, when it comes to this sweet potato version, I think nice little small ones are the way to go. Okay, I just think the final texture is a little better. And as we finish these, what we'll want to do is transfer those onto some kind of floured pan, making sure they're nicely spaced and not touching. At which point, I like to let them sit and air dry for at least 15 or 20 minutes before we try to boil them. And of course, you can make these ahead and pop them in the fridge. But I was hungry, so I decided to enjoy some right now. And while those are resting, we can go ahead and bring some salted water up to a boil, as well as prepare whatever sauce we're going to finish these with, which for me is going to be some bacon-infused butter, although it's really probably more like a butter-infused bacon. But anyway, what I did was slice up a few strips of bacon and brown it up in a pan over medium heat at which point I transferred in some butter that we can just simply let melt, or if we want, we can actually toast it a little bit until it turns sort of a golden brown and takes on a little bit of a nuttier flavor. All right, brown butter is a very common sauce for gnocchi, and I like to do it both ways. All right, it depends on my mood. In any event, once we're happy with our butter, we can go ahead and turn off the heat and finish this by stirring in some freshly minced rosemary or with some other sweet potato-friendly herb, like sage or maybe thyme. And that's it, we'll stir that in and simply reserve that until our gnocchi are cooked, which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. And please, make sure this water is well salted. All right, the water should taste like seawater. Or as the Italians say, making sure the water tasted like a seawater. Sorry, I'm not fluent. But anyway, we'll go ahead and transfer our gnocchi in, and then we'll give them a quick stir. And as we do, you're gonna notice two things. These are all gonna to sink to the bottom, but also turn into the most beautiful orange color you've ever seen. All right, check that out. And then what we're going to do is cook these for about three or four minutes, or until they float. Okay, that's how you can tell when they're done. And if they do float, you know you have a properly made gnocchi. And if they don't float, they're witches. But don't worry, they always float. And once they do, we'll go ahead and transfer those into whatever sauce we're using. And we'll go ahead and turn our heat back on to medium, or maybe a little higher if you want to fry these a little bit. And that's it. Once these are heated with our sauce, we are pretty much ready to serve. And it's probably not a bad idea to give these a little more salt. Oh, and by the way, if you did want to fry these a little more aggressively over higher heat, you'll probably want to use a nonstick pan for that because these can stick. But I'm not going to fry mine. I'm just going to cook these stirring for about a minute before turning off the heat and finishing up with some freshly grated Parmesan. And that's it. My adorable little sweet potato gnocchi are done and ready to serve up in hopefully a warm bowl. And once I had spooned in what is basically an appetizer-sized portion, I went ahead and finished with a little more cheese, as well as the obligatory sprig of rosemary for the pictures. And after taking a few of those, I grabbed a fork and dug in. And those, my friends, really were lovely. And I was very happy with how they came out. Okay, because I was careful not to work too much flour in, they were not super dense and dry and chewy. Okay, they stayed nice and moist and tender. And again, I think one of the keys here is making these nice and small just in case maybe you worked in a little too much flour, or maybe worked the dough a little too much. And as far as the flavors go, that earthy, subtle sweetness from the sweet potato works so well with the bacon, and also that little touch of rosemary. And of course, copious amounts of butter and Parmesan never hurts. And while this really was an ultra simple way to enjoy these, they don't really need a lot of help to shine. But having said that, these would work in your favorite pasta sauce, whether that is a simple tomato-based marinara, or maybe a rich and decadent gorgonzola cream sauce. Oh yeah, that would be good. Or really anything you'd serve regular potato gnocchi with. And right here I was trying to cut one in half so you could see the texture inside. But they're too small so you'll just have to trust me. And as fantastic an appetizer as this makes, do not be afraid to use this as a side dish. Right, especially since you can boil these ahead of time. And then just heat them up in the pan or whatever you cooked as your main course. Whether that's a pork chop or a piece of chicken or a steak or whatever. But anyway, whether you serve these as a side dish, or as an appetizer or a main course, the important thing is that you serve them. Which is why I really do hope you give these a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, 
a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.